Thank you, so I'm uh, doubly blessed today. I get some resources to do what I love, and I get a few minutes to talk to you folks about something that I'm very passionate about, obviously. Um, I wanna begin my, my comments with um, uh, a look at a basic question that was raised by a report that um, was done in um, 2004 by the American Diploma Project. And the basic question was, are our high school standards adequate to enable our young people to thrive in a global economy driven by technology? And the brief answer is no. Some numbers to illustrate that point. Those numbers represent the position of our 15-year-olds in international testing, in math, science, and reading, respectively. College graduation rates, got a ways to go. 72% is the percentage of young people who are not qualified for military service because of academic or uh, health reasons. In New York State, to bring it a little bit closer to home, the good news is we now graduate across the state 75% of our young people. 35% of them actually are considered college and career ready based on a yardstick that was established by New York State that said um, basically to meet that standard you needed a 75 in English and an 80 in math. When you look at black and brown children, students, that gap is even more interesting in terms of the amount of, of distance that we have to proceed. It's all the more challenging when we consider that of the 47 million jobs projected in this country in the year 2018, two thirds of those are going to require some additional education. When the National uh, Governors Conference got into the conversation and um, really were obviously very concerned, they called in the Council of Chief State School Officers and they were looking for a solution. And one of those solutions that arrived, or part of the solution that arrived at their thinking was by glancing overseas and seeing that we were among the last of the industrialized countries in the world that actually had national standards. Thus were born something called the Common Core Learning Standards, state-led, back-mapped, meaning simply that they, they basically started with what do we require in a high-performance work environment at this point in time, and began to look backwards at what that curriculum would be to lead to there. Internationally benchmarked, fewer or more focused. One of the gifts we have not given our, our teachers over the last uh, couple of decades, really, has been the gift of saying, instead of adding more to your platter, why don't we see if we can do a little bit less and, and reach a standard of mastery that's a little different rather than coverage. And finally, in, in a critical issue that I think needs to be separated was, they didn't tell you how to do it. It wasn't curriculum, it really was about outcomes, outcomes like literacy in all disciplines. Reading and writing, and the reading and writing story in science and math being equally as important to the story that we normally provide in English. Deep understanding, back to that idea of focus. Can we really discuss mastery and the idea that 65 is no longer enough? Balance between nonfiction and fiction, and one of the critical areas that is certainly a part of the international benchmarking is, how do you use this stuff? Let's get the rigor and relevance, and for our young people, it's through application. What I don't want to do is depress you completely today with, with some of this right now. I want you to look at this as an opportunity. An opportunity that a number of communities around the country have seized and have begun to think about, how do we build a civic infrastructure that actually works in support of the schools and helping our young people along that developmental journey from cradle to career. And the, the model that I want to offer you today, or at least the principles, are borrowed from a, uh, a model that was developed in Cincinnati, and it's called STRIVE. And essentially that civic infrastructure is built upon four essential standards. And as you look at these basic concepts, if you will, I want you to think about it in terms of your roles that you play every day, either in the workplace or in your homes. The first one is a shared community vision. 
One of, the belief, one of the beliefs that I have is we've got a lot to do to be able to lift the whole community in terms of thinking about what does it mean to have a, high, a culture of high expectations. And I would say to you in your role as parents or relatives, grandmas, whatever it is that you uh, have a relationship with children, consider how we're going to develop the idea, again, that 65 is not enough. A second area, we know a lot more about how young people learn at this point than we've been either willing or able to be able to develop and deliver in our schools. Be an advocate out there for, for evidence-based decision-making and make sure that you hold those folks accountable. Collaborative action is, is just what it says. Let's figure out how we do this together and that is the fun of this environment or the challenge, I think. We've got a lot of us who are leaning forward and working on this kind of problem, let's figure out how we do it together. And I would encourage you as volunteer, as mentor, as professional, whatever organization you're involved in, think about how you will open a door for a young person who needs a special goal. Investment in sustainability, think about your role as citizen. It is going to require us not only to work together, but to rethink how we have used the dollars that we are investing. We are not going to be blessed with new resources. We've got to figure out new ways to spend what we have. The other part of, and, and this is my wish, in looking at that developmental, um, I'll call it a scaffold, that you saw earlier, Shimon County has begun, as some of you probably heard if you were here last year, to look at readiness as it relates to zero to five young people and through something called the School Readiness Project, and the good news is Steben and Schuyler counters are going to continue, or at least are planning, to be able to replicate that project. My wish at this point is that we look at the next stage on that continuum, K-3 to literacy specifically, and talk about how can we come together to deal with the issue of summer reading loss, which is one of the major, major issues for those little people and their journey to get to literacy by age three. Your children, my grandchildren, are going to be competing against young people who are being raised on five other continents. Will they be ready? I suggest that as a community, if we step up, they will. Thank you so very much. <laughs>